Virtual man, shall I say, back at it again. This time with a new 400 gigabyte with all new fixes, some new games, some hidden gen gems, some fixes, um, some DIY, do-it-yourself things for the uh, Raspberry Pi that um, you know a lot of people ask those questions. So the DIY section I want to highlight. Um, really, really clean theme optimizer. Every single video snap and JPEG you can think of. Before it was like 99%. I'm sure now it's at about 100%. So all your classic arcade MAME games, everything, Nintendo DS, some games that didn't work in the past are now working. Um, and then all your consoles, especially some of the obscure ones. Um, 400 gigabytes, so it's going to be rocking almost 1,200 titles, you know, over 35 systems. And, uh, you know, everything, the artwork, the metadata, you know, it's all here. It's all selected on the right emulator. Everything is up to date and uh, pre-done scripts for you. So this is a uh, hefty one. I know if you've seen these videos in the past and you already have the latest 400 gigabyte before this, you know, maybe it might not be worth the upgrade and the download time and whatever else. But for those of you who haven't had a, had a chance to check this out, it is phenomenal. It is faster than some of the previous builds I've seen from V-Man. It is, uh, you know, really impressive so far. I'm really, really impressed. You know, you have way more than you can handle here. This is the, you know, they call it, he's calling it the Bliss image, retro gaming Bliss, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, I would agree that if you were on a stranded island and you had this image up and running, you can last a while if you had food and water uh, with with this puppy here. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so on first boot, you wanna go ahead and just let the thing start up and wait three or four minutes. You're gonna see a black screen and a little dashing line in the upper left-hand corner. Go ahead and uh, just wait. That's just basically the image auto expanding. After that, just physically turn off your uh, Pi and then reboot it. If you're gonna be using an external hard drive, this is actually already set up for that. You just wanna plug in your external hard drive. I think there's a couple other things you need to do and it'll go ahead and expand to that hard drive as well. Uh, so it's pretty simple in those regards, getting it all set up, and then you're going to be booted up. Uh, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, and I have to say, for the most part, everything is all set up. I did have to redo my Dreamcast controls. That's really easy. Just go into Rycast and set those controls up. Um, you may need a keyboard to do that. It does have music already pre-installed. It does have 12 different custom screen uh, boot screens as well, splash screens, which is really cool uh, that he spent so much time making those things. As far as the image size itself, we're rocking at 360 gigabytes. It's going to be 387 billion, 566 million, 879 thousand bytes um, speaking of scripts look at all these scripts everything you name it uh, Rycast there you go Rycast date oh that's the date and time fix but um, you could do the Rycast I think it's in RetroPy setup yep and then you're gonna go to Rycast there network tools you can get Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth um, controllers you want to use a PS4 controller PS3 controller easy to do visuals and themes and things all the bezels are already set up all this all this um, shaders are already on all the Hursty themes are installed. There's like 50 themes installed and the randomizer is already installed. The bezel project is already installed. So all that stuff is on for you. Now, for those of you who are like, eh, I don't really like all those bells and whistles and all that extra stuff. He has a DIY tutorial as well as there's some, you know, some easy, um, scripts pre-built, but he also, uh, line item DIY, do it yourself, uh, has shown you how to do all that in the tap -a talk channel. Um, he tells you how to do the PS4, PS3 controller, how to get the 8-bit controller to work, how to get a trackball to work, how to get the Dreamcast controls working. So all these little questions that come up all the time, there actually is a do-it-yourself walkthrough on all of those things already. Um, and then you have the Playbox toolkit as well. Um, a lot of stuff going on in this image. When you go to Playbox, it will take you to a script. So once you enter in there though, you can see all the different Playbox scripts here. So lots and lots and lots. So before we jump into some highlights is he did get Zelda to work on Nintendo DS. A great Zelda game and uh, just like most of them. And a lot of people 
it's it's he's under the understanding i've never really messed with it because i usually don't use nintendo ds on the raspberry pi but i have to say he um oh back to his little diy he does have settings on how to set up your drastic emulator with your controller because uh, a lot of people get li like a little bit um, confused because it's a touchscreen, right? And how to use a touchscreen with a controller. And there are some, you can get it to work. It's a little um, different, but it can you can absolutely play a game um, with a controller on the Nintendo DS. So I'm trying to find, there you go, The Legend of Zelda. Both of these boot and run just fine. Both Legend of Zeldas for Nintendo DS. So really, really cool there. Nintendo DS had some really great games and I think it's a system that doesn't get a lot of love on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so as I mentioned, you have all those themes as well. You can go over here and it's just lists and lists and lists and lists. I don't wanna have to run through another one, but there is a uh, lot. Some of them are vertical. Some of them are wheel scrolls. Some of them are horizontal scrolls. Um, so play around with those Im those uh, themes. But every time you boot up the Pi right now, it is on the uh, it is on the theme randomizer. So every time you boot up the Pi, it's a little different. So kind of cool. Um, if you want it to stay the same, you can absolutely turn that off. No problem at all. So as you see, you got your old 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 school black and white eight bit computer based systems. You even have your Virtual Boy, and then you have things like Dreamcast all set up for you, uh, which a lot of images don't spend time doing, but you have Dreamcast. And then on top of all that, he has one of the more diverse arcade sets I've ever seen, and um, Daphne all set up, um, and a lot of Japanese titles as well. And as I mentioned, Hidden Gem. So I'm trying to get, like, how is this any different than before? Those are, to me, are the biggest differences. As far as every, oh, and then he did add, um, as I was saying earlier, you know, 99% video snaps and, and JPEGs. Well, look, now he has all the video snaps and JPEGs for Game & Watch. This is usually super overlooked. Nobody really cares about poor Game & Watch. Uh, great for kids, though. Great for your reflexes and, and your eyesight, probably eyesight training. Um, also, if you want to play those claw games later, good claw game practice. Um, these games... Um, don't get a lot of love, and here you are. You got they got a lot of love. Look at all these games. Wow, there's actually a lot more than I thought. Um, so Snoopy tabletop, and there's a there's a little video. Snoopy tennis video. He also did this to all of Amiga. Amiga is the other system that doesn't get a lot of love. It does actually by quite a few people, but um, you know it has all the video snaps. So pretty cool. You don't even have to boot the game. You can kind of watch the game, and see what it's about. Like this game looks cool right you're like all right that's cool i'm gonna rock around i want that big gun gun that's bigger than the guy uh so that's all done for you cody is installed i think the plex add-on is already installed as well favorites this is cool i think he has like 80 favorites over here and i have to agree with a lot of these really really fun games so if you get overwhelmed um jump in here have some fun um, as I mentioned with the arcade games, that's where you're going to see a lot of the shaders. If you don't like it, you can turn those off really easily. And then we're in the collections here. So let's go ahead and start from all games and just do a quick rundown of the systems and the games. So 11,933 games. Favorites, there's going to be 80. Last played, there's going to be two. There's a lot more than that. I don't know why it's only showing two. Um, Cody, options, Amiga, 626 Amiga games. One of those is the emulator itself. You do have to change the core on that for it to work. It's very easy. It's in the DIY section, but I've also put it in many, many videos before as well. Amiga CD32, um, great system as well. Um, I think once you make the set, the change on the Amiga emulator, it should work for the Amiga CD as well. CPC, you got 114. Arcade Classic, so over almost 1,700 arcade games. And uh, you'll see some gameplay a little bit. There's some games that you don't see on a lot of other images. And all artwork and video snaps working. Um, you know, I know nowadays that's pretty typical, but, you know, it's still a, that's a lot of work. A lot of work to get all that work. And Atari 2600, 630, 5296. So there you go. A lot of images don't have 5200. So 5200 love, 96. 7858, Atari Lynx, 83. Commodore 64, 64. So a little light on that end, but, you know, I don't spend a lot of time on Commodore 64, and uh, these are kind of some of the bet the more popular games. Not better, but more popular. Uh, 
Coley, Co, Vision, 140, Daphne, 9, and something that he did in his previous builds that I'm sure are here as well is they are all mapped for a controller to, to boot, so you don't necessarily need a mouse and keyboard. They should work with a controller. Dreamcast, uh, as I mentioned, I'm on an Xbox 360 controller, so I do need to change my controls to get these to work, but um, there are some cool games in here, some games that um, you have like your popular games, but then you have some other games that are uh, maybe a little more obscure, some gems in there as well. Family Computer System 386, Family Computer Disk System 128, Super Famicom 509, Nintendo Game & Watch 52, Game Gear 259, Game Boy 557, Game Boy Advance, pretty much all of them, Game Boy Color, all of them, there's 1,500, Sega Genesis, you can set this to Mega Drive if you want, very easy to do, again, in the DIY do-it-yourself topic, he tells you how to do that, 135 for Intellivision, Master System 277, MSX2, 100, Nintendo 64, 30. So, you know, Nintendo 64 doesn't run that great on the Pi, so he didn't just load it all up, just put a few games on there. Nintendo DS. So, this to me is really awesome. 252 games. If you like Nintendo DS, look no further. Great performance, a lot of fun, a lot of great titles. Um, get lost in here, have fun in there. Neo Geo 140, Nintendo 782, Super Nintendo 787, Super Nintendo CD, better sound on these games. Some nice games there. Uh, open Beats of Rage, so the Open Boar. Um, we've seen this in his last image. This was kind of the big deal before. So it's not necessarily a big deal, but if you haven't experienced it before, these are all fan-based games. And a lot of them are really, really cool. So um, something different, something you've probably never used before, something you can't get on uh, a system, on most average, you know, or most, you know, run-of-the-mill systems. Uh, you need emulation for that. Ports, um, some old-school DOS games, some fun stuff. Brutal Doom, Sea Dogs, they're all full full games, and they're all in English as well, where we see some image creators not always put them in English. And uh, some Zelda hacks on the bottom there. Uh, some fun stuff. Some really fun stuff. PSP Minis, 2 Hundo. PlayStation, 359. So he compresses all of his PlayStation games. That's how he's able to get 359. Typically, a PlayStation game is about a gigabyte each. You know, you know, quite a few are of much, much less. But, um, you know, the PlayStation games alone are taking up the majority of the space, I imagine, on this image. And you got 359 of them on top of the other 34, 35 plus systems. Uh, you know, that's cool. ScumVM, 100 games. And these aren't smart games either, small games either. Um, you have either Residual VM or ScumVM emulation and uh, some really good uh, games on here. Uh, some fun, fun games to get lost in. Sega 32X, 32, Sega CD, 100. Another system that isn't necessarily tiny games, but um, have pretty much a lot of them here for Sega CD. SG-1068, TurboGrafx-16, 100, TurboGrafx-CD, 169. Again, look at all these gems here. This is cool stuff right here. A lot of games to, uh, to check out here. On TurboGrafx CD, and then uh, TI ninety nine ninety games, Vetrix twenty five, Virtual Boy twenty five, sixty eight thousand sharp hundred, and then finally ZX Sinclair one hundred eighty. Next up, these are all just collections, so all the beat 'em up games on this whole you know system one hundred thirty two Capcom Class. I guess these are beat 'em ups, just arcade. Oh no, I guess it's a, uh, it's all it's um. I imagine there's more than that, but um, beat them up in that script is 132 games. Capcom Classics, 90. Castlevania, 25. Double Dragon, 21. The King of Fighters, 24. Super Mario, Mega Man. So all your games there. Uh, NES Classic. Virtual Man's Arcade. These are kind of his hand-selected games. All a lot of fun. That's a cool place to check out. Racing, all your racing games. See, this is more like it, 393. I feel like beat em up should be closer to that. But uh, shoot em ups, 228. NES or SNES Classic 21, Sonic 12, Street Fighter, and then Zelda. Look at all these fun Zelda games. I've only beaten about three of these. I need to uh, step up my game. Okay, uh, and then back to all games. <laughs>
Ready, boys? Sally out. Check on the school. So there you have it. I really like this theme right here. I like the spinning wheel. That's cool. Awesome. There's no reason why this. All of his images in the past have gotten A plus from me because they are just so decked out to the max. It's ridiculous. The scripts, everything is done when he first boot up. It's you know with RetroPie being you know if there's a, there's a learning curve. Um, this is just so as kind of as plug and play as I've seen a RetroPie for the uh, build go. This is amazing. Um, as far as uh, a collect, just the collection of video snaps and JPEGs and games, 
you know, I there's only a few sets that come uh, close to this. And, you know, it's about a handful. Um, and so really, really cool. I like it a lot. If he makes another 400 gigabyte, I probably won't do a review on it unless it's for the Raspberry Pi 4 because we pretty much have hit the limit here. Um, the only thing I can see you doing here is, you know, adding more Nintendo 64 or adding more Commodore or if there's a particular older system that you really like and the whole ROM pack's not here. All you'd have to do is add those ROMs on here. Super, super easy to do. Uh, you know, everything else is here. It's running the scripts, the, the all the artwork, the loading screens, the bezels, you know, it, it the themes are already installed. You know, everything is here. And uh, with 400 gigabytes being so cheap now with the SD cards, you know, I would, you know, you get the Pi and this and a controller, you get this whole setup for, you know, around 120 bucks, 140 bucks, maybe for some nicer stuff. And, uh, you know, you really will be, as the title says, in retro gaming bliss. Um, you know, you, you know, it's, it's fantastic. It's really, really nice. And to be playing on this little single board computer, and you boot it up and you see the old school arcade boot screen, you know, it's nostalgia all over. So really great. As I mentioned, you know, I don't think you could go anywhere from here. You know, you really <laughs> can't go anywhere from here. It's a good image. I like it. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.